Hey there, and today I'm gonna to teach you how to install the Facebook Ads Pixel on your store, whether it is a WordPress or a Shopify or any website. I'm gonna teach you how you can do it for whatever platform you are using. Now, before we get into this, I wanna to talk to you today about why it's so important to know how to install your Pixel and what the benefits of your Meta or Facebook Pixel are. So most importantly, it allows you to track events, right? You're spending money on ads, you want to know what events are firing, right? Everyone has an objective in business about what their ideal customer is. Is that a lead for your solar panel business? Is it a purchase for your e-commerce brand? Whatever that looks like, the Pixel allows you to do that. And understanding how to install the Pixel and then troubleshoot and set up the Pixel is a very important part <clears throat> in being able to do that effectively. So today I'm gonna to show you about that. You will be able to get data that you can get impressions, clicks, add to carts, initiate checkout. Different integrations have more deeper integrations or you can install it manually. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. I'm gonna to stick to a easy, quick and easy way for you to how to do it today. But there's plenty of tools you can look out there for more advanced analytics. Google Tag Manager where you can integrate it and then do incredibly custom events for different things. But it's really important to understand the basis of this and work towards something like that. So right now, I'm just gonna teach you more about that. It'll allow you essentially having a clean pixel set up properly to run your ads as effectively as possible to know where you're generating the most revenue for your business, whatever that looks like, to then scale that effectively. So that's why it's so very important to know how to do that. That's why I wanted to sort of talk about that today. So then you can stay ahead. Otherwise you're spending money on ads and you're flying blind. You don't know what's working and guaranteed you're not gonna get anywhere. So it's a very important part. So let's get straight into it right now. All right, so in this example, I'm gonna focus more on in Shopify. Uh, most of the time I'm used to doing this with Shopify or there's WordPress, but I'll be showing you a bit about that today anyway. So. If you're installing it via Shopify and you're using the integration, you can literally use this app, links in the description, it's just a free app, um, that allows you to integrate your Facebook and Instagram to your uh, ads manager, and it'll even help you set up your catalog, it'll help you integrate your Facebook and Instagram, and when you set up your catalog, it'll also push your catalog for Facebook and Instagram for people to do um, interactive shopping through there as well. Okay, which works quite well as you build out your brand. So very, very easy, it guides you through it. Just follow the prompts, very, very easy. If you are on WordPress, for example, and doing WooCommerce, you can use the Meta Pixel by WordPress. Again, the link's in the description, or you can just Google official Facebook Pixel for, for that. Install it, exact same thing, it'll open up a prompt. Connect the assets of your business assets. You need to have a, a a um, business manager. I have a video on setting up all Facebook that you need to know here. You can go check that out and learn how to set up your business manager, your ad account, everything like that. And then obviously with your pixel as well, you can look at it like this. I also wanted to add there, the other one that is in the description as well is the Meta Pixel Helper, um, which is really, really important as well. Um, it is a Chrome extension, so you need Google Chrome on desktop, of course. And this is it here once it's installed. Okay, it's just a free one. I just put the link there just so you, or you can Google it, but just put the links there just to make it a little bit easier for you. So between those, those are the main tools that you need, whether you're on Shopify, the Metapixel Hub all works on any website, right? And I'll be going through a bit about that today, um, showing you an example, going fully through it as we sort of speak. Okay, so now let's go into our ads manager and let's talk about this a bit further. So I'm just here in my data sources, you can get to your data sources via business settings, data sources. You make your data sources usually in the business settings in the back end, right? So under business settings, data sources and pixels under, under data, and then you can go there. For today's example, we're just going to go through this. I've got a demo, pic, demo pixel, and I have a Debutify demo store that I just use for testing and so on and so forth you'll see that the Meta Pixel Helper is installed and we'll go through that soon as well and talk talk about that further. There's a few ways that you can install a Pixel. Um, so firstly, let's go through the overview. Okay, so you can see we've got data, page view, view content, add to cart. 
page view is more outside of e-commerce. If it's like inside of e, um, if you're an e-commerce brand, you'll be mainly looking at view content, add to cart, initiate checkout, add payment info, purchase at the main events. You can see your quality match, um, which can be improved. Um, obviously being a demo store, I'm not fast about it, but this is where you need to learn about diagnostics as well. To have nice, clean data makes a big, big difference. You can see if you expand it, that you can see the events firing. Right? So just test events that have just been firing. Um, and you can see the v various values. And I'm not going to get too much into that today. It's a bit too advanced. We're going to keep this as simple as possible. Now here you've got diagnostics. Um, you can see I've ignored one, review, review domains. I get that, I just reviewed it. It'll, you'll get an email about that too. You can also see history and you can see settings like what business manager is connected to. You can also check under settings. The main one I check is when you scroll down, um, track events automatically without code, conversion, API gateway, always recommended, always recommended. Um, extend attribute uploads, I tick that and allow historical conversion uploads. I'll be honest, I don't use them, but um, really, really important. You can also do traffic permissions. So um, you can allow and block. So set permissions to allow or block events Facebook receives from a website. So only allowed domains, uh, only domains added to the allowed list can send events to Facebook. So basically it's locking it down because what you'll find is, is that other people will try, they can with the pixel helper get your pixel and it actually can confuse your data. So you can actually just have a look there. In the beginning you won't need that, but that's just something I always recommend looking at. Now test events, right? You can see here I've done a test event. I'm gonna clear this activity um, and I'll close that tab. I did it on this one and I'll close that one as well. So what I've done is, this is the URL um, of this example. And this is using this. Now I'll see my pixel fire. I should see that it's green. I see a page view and I see a page view here, right? It's processed at 1247. Uh, as you can see, the screen change. If I go to a different page on this website, in a moment, we should see, which we have, we should see, uh, pardon me, it goes from top to bottom. Um, it, you, you will see that the URL. So the, the URL I've gone to is literally this URL. Uh, it's given the event ID, which you can see, uh, event ID, which is that. So it, basically it's saying that it's connected. If I do an action going a bit further into it and I want to add to cart. Okay, so I've added to cart. So I should see further down the funnel in a moment. Fantastic, so you can see that it's, that it's processed at all, perfect. And you can see that I've added to cart and it's even added the value, right? So uh, it's, Oh, because I've added multiple to cart from multiple testing, but each one is 248. So it's added the right amount in the right currency and the content ID. The content ID in Shopify for reference is the back end URL when you're editing a product. So if you go here um, and let's find the leather jacket. which is this one, you will see that this is the event ID ending in three, two, four. Have I gotten a different one? Nonetheless, you'll usually, I'm not gonna get every detail into it, I haven't, but you can see that it's getting the content IDs um, you can even see the product name and everything. So it's really, really good. And this is all from the integration from the free app from this one. That, that's how handy that is. Um, nothing more to it. To manage the apps as well, go under here, Facebook and Instagram. And there you go. And you can see I haven't done the setup, but under the settings, you will see the settings and you can set that up, right? So that's an integration setup. You, there's multiple ways you can go about it and you can test events. So now I've done this example as well where I want to set up events. So you can use an event setup tool to add standard events and parameters without needing code. This is the easiest option, right? So this is a great way without needing code as well that you can set things up uh, manually as well. 
So I've put in the, the fashion store .myshopify.com forward slash jacket, which doesn't exist. Um, and you can see that it's come up with this page. It doesn't exist. That's fine. So I want to track a button or I want to track a URL. You can see all the events. I want to track the URL. And I'm going to say that this page, whatever reason, is anti -car. The URL equals or contains. So in most cases, you'll want to go equals to be very specific. Contains you know, is allows a lot more flexibility, but you're going to get a lot of other variables. So usually you would want to go URL equals because people that are doing this probably like lead generation where you're wanting them to go to like a thank you page um, and that thank you page, then it's really important. The value. So this is where, again, because this is statically set up, it's not dynamic. If it's e-commerce, you use shop for integration. If it's not, you will choose a value. Now, how I usually define that is um, however many leads you get through on your website, what your average order value of your customer is, um, is sort of what you might want to put as, as something like that, right? Um, so, you know, if you've got an established business, let's say in lead generation, your average order, you know, for a lead to then, because um, there's a specific way, I haven't done it in a while, but basically the best way is you get the average order value and your sort of conversion rates, and that would be your existing conversion rate. So if you have... If you've been taking calls and, and getting leads come through um, and you have a way of de defining of the seven people you end up giving a quote to, no, let's make it easier, 10, that two of them actually go through. So that's a 20% conversion rate. And let's say your average order value is $1,000. Then you would put this value as, um, as uh, two hundred dollars, right? As an example, right? You can set that all statically as well, because you know that if someone gets that page, on average, that lead is worth two hundred dollars for you, based on your existing static data, right? Um, so if you wanted to add that, click your basket subtotal, la la, um, or you can don't include a value, and obviously choose your relative country. And again, you can add a content ID because this is more for um, Shopify. That's why it's done that. But if I go lead and I want to choose a value, you can see it's very similar, but you know, different, right? Um, but very important as well, as I said, for e-commerce, you want to choose a content ID, exact content ID from URL, um, a specific SKU, it knows that because it's a add to cart, right? So just choose the right event that's right for you. A lot of people doing this will be choosing lead, um, and then you want to choose the relevant information. Most of the time you won't use that though, but that's how you can set up an event, and we go confirm. Okay, and then we go test event. Okay, so if we go clear activity. What we should see, same page, but we've now got a lead. Right? So again, I haven't done it perfectly. I could spend more time on it. Um, but you can see that I've now technically got a lead, aesthetically set it up. Um, and you know, the more you optimize it, the better it is. But you can see it's gotten a page view because it gets that by default. And if you go with the pixel helper, we should see the page view has fired um, and that it's just manually processed that URL as a lead. So you might not see it through your pixel helper, but that's pretty much how you do it. So I always just use the um, test events just to validate things. And the cool thing as well is, is I go to any other page on this website. And boom, everything is still tracked, right? So even if you send it and make a custom event, it's all sort of done that way anyway, right? So now to be clear as well, you can. Uh, there's a number of ways you can also do this too, um, where you can use other third-party integrations. I'm just using Shopify and WordPress as examples but you can integrate with all of them. So you can see we've got an integration. If I want to add another integration, you can go Metapixel, set up. You can manually add code. So this is where, as I said earlier, if you want to use tools like Google Tag Manager or you, you're a maybe no and confident with doing it yourself, you can install the code. You can email instructions for a coworker or dev, event setup tool, or you can use an integration. If we go start here, this is where you can go a number of ways. Google Analytics is another popular one. Tag Manager, as I've said earlier. Shopify is a you know a very popular one. But as I said, with Shopify, it'll pretty much just guide you through. So 
um, just follow that, right? And then you're fine. Um, and as I said, for all of these, they all have different instructions. I'm gonna keep it really simple. Um, as I said, if you've got WooCommerce, you can do it from here as well. So whichever way you sort of prefer um, is you know, most important. I've, the Shopify one is by far the most streamlined one of them all, um, but obviously it depends on your business and stuff as well. Um, you can see it as well here, connected catalogs. So this is where if you're running an e-com brand especially, you can see your connected catalogs. And that's really important because your catalog needs to be integrated to your pixel. Otherwise it won't know the events firing to then do what one of the videos I have, you can watch here, DPA ads, dynamic product ads, very important. Um, otherwise it won't do any remarketing because it needs all the content IDs and all the event information to then put, push that to the catalog and say that this user has seen this page with you know, um, this content ID, so on and so forth, right? So, um, hold on, I'm in the wrong section, aren't I? So, you know, if I, you know, this content ID, it passes all of this. This is why it's so important to get the pixel. It passes it all back to your catalog as well at the same time with no additional work, all integrated, all dynamic, all hands off, right? So it is very, very easy. So that pretty much is how you do a pixel um, for any website. As I said, if you want a more advanced thing, look at tools like Google Analytics. You can look at tools like Google Tag Manager, but keeping it very simple, we're just gonna keep it like that today. As I said, all these links are in the link uh, description below for you to use as you see fit. Um, just to sort of hopefully make things a little easier for you. Um, I will also say that this is something that I do regularly that I find, you know, once you get the hang of it, it is relatively easy. I don't go too in depth into this stuff. I mainly just look at the test events settings and use the pixel helper and the rest is good from there. The good thing with the pixel helper as well as a little tip for marketers is you can use it to um, actually see if a competitor is running uh, their pixel on their website, if they are, they're probably running ads and you can look at the Facebook ads live. But that's a bit of a, uh, a different discussion where you can sort of use it to monitor competition as well. So anyway, I hope this has been a helpful video. Um, I really enjoyed making it. Thank you very much for your time watching today. If you did enjoy, please be sure to like, share, subscribe. Otherwise, have a lovely day, take care and goodbye.